Finally, man, finally, we got some Scotty, man. We got some Scotty Pittman in this bug, man. Um, yeah. I really don't know much about Scotty Pittman, honestly. Um, we know I know I know a lot about Michael Jordan. We know tons about Larry Bird, right? But Scotty Pittman, um, I don't really know so much about Scotty Pittman. So we're gonna find out today. Was Scotty Pittman actually good? The title is How Good Was Scotty Pittman? We're going to check this video out. Man, if you guys enjoyed the video, enjoy the reaction. Man, y'all make sure y'all drop a like on the V. Subscribe. Click the bell icon. Turn your notifications on all so you don't miss no bangers from your boy B, man. We got a lot of other players we need to check out, too, that was on, that played back in the day, the NBA Legends, man. So you don't want to miss those videos, man. With all that being said, let's hop straight into the video. Let's get it, man. I got you in love knowing that it's real. Scottie Pippen was the first person Michael Jordan thanked in his Hall of Fame speech because he never won a title without Pippen. Here's the retrospective of the 90s Bulls dynasty through the lens of Scottie Pippen. Facts? Scott, bro, MJ never won a, a championship without Scottie? Mm. We'll talk about his road to the NBA. Where does he rank all time? And how good he was well, without That's his Jordan. ride or die right there. Shout out to non sports for putting this video to together, the man. NBA. Scottie Pippen grew up in a small town in Arkansas as the youngest of 12 children. When he was a freshman in high school, his father suffered a stroke, which placed him in a wheelchair for the rest of his life. Damn. And the poor Pippen family didn't have enough funds to send Scottie to college. Scottie made the varsity team as a sophomore, but he struggled to earn playing time until his senior year because he was always super skinny. Even though he was a talented point guard, Scotty stood only at six foot one when he graduated. And Real quick, man, like, in high school, they definitely have favoritisms and stuff like that. But, man, like, look, being skinny in certain sports is like, yeah, man. Like, I was super skinny in, 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 uh, in high school as well, playing football. It's like, yeah, man. They gon' they gonna choose the bigger, the bigger. Even though if you skilled or not, they gonna most likely go with someone that's like got some more weight to them and stuff like that. Believe it or not, man, it happened to me. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't look, I'm not complaining about it though. You know what I'm saying? We still did our thing on the field for sure. And had zero college offers. His basketball dreams would have likely been dead right then, but his high school coach intervened and asked a favor of his good friend Don Dyer, who coached at the University of Central Arkansas. Mm. Dyer couldn't offer Scotty a scholarship, but he gave Pippen the role of a team manager, which enabled him to earn some money and train with the basketball team. Mm. Scotty barely played, and Coach Dyer told him he needed to use his freshman year to bulk up. However, Scotty experienced a remarkable growth spurt, and before the start of the next season, he stood at his current height of six foot eight. Damn. The university from offered six him one? a full scholarship, and Scotty got inserted into the starting lineup with his new height and a pterodactyl wingspan of seven foot three. On God damn, Scotty out here. This tree truck, bro. Hold on, what school picked him up? I missed foot it. Eight. The university offered him a full scholarship, and Scotty got inserted into the starting oh, lineup the same school with his at. new height and a pterodactyl wingspan of seven foot three. On top of his point guard skills, Pippen started to dominate. Coach Dyer first played Scotty at both guard positions, but later on, he used him on the wing and sometimes even at center. Because of that, Pippen began developing the all-around game that later made him famous in the NBA. Scotty also gained weight and strength, and he yes, finished sir. his senior year with the averages of 24 points, 10 rebounds, and 4.5 assists yes, on 60% shooting. However, because Central oh, Arkansas double. competed in the lowly NAIA division, Pippen was a hidden gem, and many GMs figured he wouldn't be able to replicate that output in the NBA. Ooh. The Bulls' Jerry Krause was not one of those GMs, and he wanted Pippen badly. In the 1987 NBA draft, Scotty was selected fifth overall by Seattle, but Krause then traded Chicago's eighth. That was when Bird was in his prime in 87, wasn't it? Oh, this is gonna be, this is about to get good. Pick and multiple future picks to get Pippen, which proved to be one of the smartest decisions of his career. Adapting to the NBA and the Pistons roadblock. Until the arrival of Pippen and Horace Grant for the 1987-88 season, the Chicago Bulls were a one-dimensional team that depended heavily on one player. 
Michael Jordan. MJ was a superstar and the main offensive option, but although his qualities were undeniable, he could not lead the team on his own. The Bulls never had a positive record in Jordan's first three seasons and have won only one playoff game, routinely losing in the first round of the postseason. Scotty came off the bench as a rookie, and he struggled with the speed of the game and tactics at first. But with Pippen on the team, Chicago had won 50 games, and in the deciding game five of the first round, Scotty had his first career start, and he contributed with 24 points, five assists, and three steals. The Bulls. So would y'all consider would y'all consider Scotty like a role player? Or was he that guy? Y'all let me know in the comments, man. Bulls won the series and finally advanced to the second round, where they would lose to the Pistons in five games. Pippen had back surgery and missed the start of the 89 season. He came off the bench in the first 16 games upon his return. But once he entered the starting five, he never subbed in again. Oh gosh, Pippen finished the regular crazy. season with 14 points, six rebounds, and 3.5 assists on average. And the Bulls made it to the Eastern Conference Finals. How many points? 3.5 assists on average. Finished the regular season with 14, 14. points, six rebounds, and 3.5 assists on average. And the Bulls made it to this the Eastern the Conference Finals, where they once again lost to the Pistons. In Damn, the Pistons was like that. Detroit was like that, man. I, I heard, though, that Detroit did play dirty and stuff like that back in the day so yeah. 1990 phil jackson became the head coach the bulls won 55 games and pip displayed an excellent all-around game he improved in all statistical categories and was named an all-star in the playoffs the bulls reached the eastern conference finals for the second season in a row but again lost to old acquaintances from detroit this time in seven Tiger games Thomas. pippen played great for the entire playoffs but in the crucial game seven he complained of having terrible migraines and ended up scoring two points on one for ten of shooting jordan Damn. who wasn't accustomed to not trusting his teammates was not too pleased with scotty and didn't fully believe in his headaches but that would all soon change three p for the 1991 season, the Bulls fired on all cylinders. They were the best offensive team in the league and won a franchise record 61 games with okay. Jordan as the MVP. Pippen again improved in almost all statistical categories with 18 points, seven rebounds, and six assists. All right, Scotty, Scotty is, uh, yeah, he's hoping, bro. He's definitely like that. And for him to be 7'3 and moving like he's moving? It's actually insane, man. I'm not even gonna lie to you. Tists on average, but was unjustly left off the all-star game roster. In the playoffs, Pippen's numbers improved again, and he played the most suffocating defense in the entire NBA, outside of maybe Dennis Rodman. The Bulls finally got their revenge on the Pistons, sweeping Detroit in the Eastern Finals, which ended in the famous Pistons walk-off without the congratulatory handshakes. In the yeah, finals, the Bulls played against the Lakers and Magic Johnson, who was playing in his ninth finals. While Jordan was absolutely spectacular in that series offensively, it was Pippen's defense on Magic that made a big difference and gave the Bulls a lot of fast break points. Damn. In the fifth game, Pip led both teams in scoring with 32 and rebounding with 13, along with seven assists and five steals. And the Bulls have won the first title in franchise history. Next year, Pippen averaged 21, eight and seven and made the all-star game again, second all NBA team and first team all defense. Yes, in the playoffs, he shined when it mattered the most. In game seven of the Eastern semifinals against the Knicks, he recorded a triple double. And for the series, Pip led the team in all statistical categories other than scoring. In the finals, Chicago defeated Portland in six games. And a few months later, Pippen won the gold medal at the Olympics as a member of the Dream Team. Damn. The Bulls entered 1993 fatigued and won 10 games less than the year before. However, Jordan, and especially Pippen, raised their games for the playoffs, where the Bulls reached another NBA Finals. Scotty averaged a near triple-double in the Finals, with 22 points, 9 boards, and 8 assists Damn, in 6 he's games. Going crazy. Like always, he was tasked with the assignment of guarding the best opposing player, which in this case was Charles Barkley. Barkley. Scotty delivered once again, perfectly doubling Barkley with Horace Grant and then switching on everybody else when Barkley got rid of the ball. Yo, was Barkley really like that, man? Because Barkley be, Barkley do a lot of trash talking to himself, bro. Was Barkley really like that, man? Y'all let me know. Should we check Bar Charles Barkley out, man? 
Let me know, man. Defensively, he was in the prime of his career, and this series showed perfectly how instrumental Pippen was for the Bulls, despite Jordan averaging 41 points in the finals. Damn. Pippen's best season. After the death of his father and enormous media pressure, know, Michael it's Jordan crazy. retired from basketball before the start of the 1994 regular season. The Bulls added Steve Kerr, the most accurate three-point shooter Kerr. ever, and Tony Kukoc, the best European player at the time. But more than so anything, Steve Kerr was, the Bulls uh, now became uh, uh, PG. a regular season. The Bulls added Steve Kerr, the most accurate three-point shooter ever, and shoot Tony Kukoc, PG. the best European player at the time. But more than anything, the Bulls now became Scotty's team. There were people who expected Scotty to become Jordan, shoot 25 times per game, and average over 30 points. But that was not Pippen's game, and he continued to play like he always did. Yes, he averaged a career high in scoring with 22 points per game, but he only marginally increased the number of shot attempts from the previous years, shooting at an excellent 49% clip, and his passing game didn't suffer. Pippen also notched a career high in rebounds in 1994, snatching 8.7 boards per game, as well as steals, with 2.9 thefts per contest. Damn. I never thought about trying to win MVP or do things as an individual. It never crossed my mind to try and lead the league in scoring. That's just not how I played the game, and it wasn't in my pedigree. Team it showed player. that he was an unbelievable leader, propelling the Bulls to a 55-27 and 27 record, just two wins shy from the year before, and the Bulls showcased a level of play that no one thought could be achieved without the services of number 23. Wow. Pippen was the All-Star MVP in 1994, the leading vote-getter for All-NBA First Team and for the All-Defensive Team, and he finished third in MVP voting. Tony Kukoc said that Pippen helped him tremendously in his first NBA season, and the entire Bulls team praised Scotty for putting the team on his shoulders and giving it all on both ends of the court. That's what's up, it was man. Tony Kukoc who stole the show in the pivotal moments of Game 3 in the Eastern Semis against the Knicks. The game was tied with 1.8 seconds remaining when Phil Jackson called a timeout. Pippen demanded the ball in the final possession, but Jackson drew the play for Kukoc. Pissed off and thinking that the coach doesn't trust him, Pippen refused to go back into the game. Kukoc did eventually get the ball, and he sank a beautiful turnaround jumper for the win. While everybody celebrated, Pip Yo, come on, Scotty. This is the guy. Come on, G. Bro, you got to be a team player, man. Come on, man. That's right. That is crazy, bro. Pippen was still sulking on the bench. He apologized to everybody when they got back to the locker room, and this was the only dark moment of Pippen's phenomenal season. The series was eventually decided in Game 7, during which Pippen scored arguably the most mm. disrespectful dunk in NBA Damn, history over on Ewing. On Ewing? the last laugh. Oh my series God, was eventually bro. decided in Game 7, during which Pippen scored arguably <laughs> the most disrespectful dunk in NBA oh, no, history over Ewing. Ewing would have the last laugh, and the Knicks won the game and would later go on to the finals. In 1995, Pippen had virtually identical numbers as the year before. He led the league in steals and made the first team all NBA and Damn. first team all defense. That was a crazy but the Steve. season will forever be remembered by the I'm back return of Michael Jordan. Bro, Scotty Ashley Cole. Like, I ain't even gonna lie. He can shoot, got amazing defense. You know what I'm saying? Dribble to some degree. Bro. However, Jordan wasn't as effective as before. And also the Bulls lost Horace Grant, who was their best rebounder and interior defender. And Chicago lost to Orlando in the conference semis. Yeah. Second 3P. For the 1996 season, Jordan came fully prepared. And even more importantly, the Bulls replaced Grant with Dennis Rodman, a fierce defender and the best rebounder in NBA history. Ah. With their new big three and an excellent supporting cast, it's the there. Bulls won an NBA record 72 games and steamrolled through opponents to win their fourth NBA title. In 1997, it was much the same. Pippen scored a career-high 47 points against the Nuggets. The Bulls dominated the regular season with 69 wins and had very little trouble on their way to another NBA Finals. First trio? In the Finals, the Stockton Malone-led Utah proved to be extremely tough, and the Bulls never scored 100 points in the series. Pippen tied the Finals record in Game Damn, 3 from with seven made threes, and in Game 5, Jordan managed to give the Bulls a 3-2 lead with the infamous flu game, after which he collapsed into Pippen's arms. In game six, Damn. Pippen made one of the biggest plays of his career. With 
Let's see it, man. Let's see it, bro. Hey, nah, Scotty Pittman, bro. Look, 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 look. I didn't know Scotty was like that, bro. Honestly speaking, I had no idea Scotty Pittman was like this, bro. Chicago I'm glad up by I came two across his bid. Five seconds left. Scotty stole the inbounds pass, dove on the floor, and passed the ball to Ku Coach for a game winning dunk and the championship. Damn, Next man. year, which was thoroughly described in the Last Dance documentary, Pippen deliberately delayed surgery and missed the first half of the season due to a quarrel with the Bulls' GM, Jerry Krause, who wanted to trade Scotty on several occasions and wouldn't restructure his contract when it was clear that Pippen was the most underpaid player in the league. Wow. Pippen played through the injury the whole playoffs, and he mostly served as a decoy in the finals against Utah because his back was killing him and he couldn't shoot. Still, the Bulls bested Utah again, and the Bulls won title number six later years. Scotty was sent to Houston to team up with the aging Barkley and Olajuwon for $11 million per year in a sign and trade deal. But other than a big payday, his lone year in Houston was a failure. He often fought with Barkley, and the team lost in the first round of the playoffs. Scotty was then traded to Portland, Damn. and the Blazers reached the conference finals with a 15 point lead in the fourth quarter of Game 7 against the Lakers. Close but no cigar, as the Lakers pulled off a miraculous yeah. comeback, highlighted by Kobe's crossover on Pippen and the alley oop to Shaq. Yeah. For the next three seasons in so Portland, no, I watched that clip. crossover on Pippen, <laughs> as the Lakers pulled off a miraculous comeback, six, seven, highlighted by Kobe's seven, crossover on Pippen and the alley oop nah, to seven, Shaq. Three, Gordon, the six, For the seven. next three seasons in Portland, Pippen was still Tough. productive, but in a reduced role. He played his last season with the Bulls under the pretext of mentoring young players, but more to muster as many dollars from them as he could. It was a severance pay for those underpaid years in the 90s. Legacy. Along with Larry Bird, Scottie Pippen was the original point forward. He could pass like a point guard and score like a shooting guard and control the entire offense by himself. But unlike Bird, Scottie could impact the game without scoring a single point or dishing a single assist mm. due to his brilliant defensive his skills. Defense, bro. His incredible lateral quickness and long arms allowed him to guard all five players during one possession, which was beautifully described in that Kobe shit Bryant's crazy, detail man. series. Pippen is underrated because he was always in Jordan's shadow, and understandably so. But if it weren't for Pippen, the Bulls wouldn't be able to execute full court pressure as they did. Their half court ball distribution wouldn't be the same, and their transition game wouldn't be as deadly. If Scotty didn't play next to Michael, Jordan wouldn't be able to focus the majority of his energy on scoring because he knew that Pippen would hound the opponent's best player for 48 minutes. Pippen was the ultimate team player who could do everything on the court, and in my opinion, he's among the five or six best small forwards ever. Nah, Pippen in the goat, bro. Pippen, we gotta put him. We gotta put Scotty in the goat category, man. Cause if it won for Scotty, Jordan would never won no championship, bro. Facts, bro. The nigga, his defense was insane, immaculate. What are we talking about? Pistol Pete, Marvich, Mar Marvich. Y'all want me to check that out? Gotcha. I think we need to add this to the list. We need, we need to, yeah, man. Some way, somehow, we need to add that to the list, man. But anyways, there you guys go. Uh, how good was Scotty Pittman Ashley, man? Uh, video, man. If you guys enjoyed the reaction, y'all make sure y'all drop a like, subscribe, turn notifications on. This stuff means a lot to the channel, man. Appreciate y'all, man. We finally hit that uh big thirteen hundred, man. It's a blessing. We going crazy, man. We ain't look. All we gonna do is keep dropping these bangers for y'all. We got, like I said, we got a lot more um. OG legend players that played in the past. I have no idea that was good and, and whatnot, unless I played with them on the video game on 2K. But uh, yeah, we got a lot of players to check out. Um, if y'all guys got any recommendations of videos, man, be sure to drop the video title or something down below. I'm always down in the comments showing love. Um, with that being said, I'll catch y'all next video, man. Appreciate the love and support, man.